Good evening, everybody. Just wanted to uh, jump on and give uh, today's daily chase. Let me adjust this real quick. Oh. And today's daily chase is titled, Somebody Has to Tend the Fire. David did two things to make sure God's presence remained in Jerusalem. First, he prepared a place for God's presence by constructing a tabernacle without walls or a veil. Second, he did something special once the Levites arrived at the tabernacle and set the Ark and the Covenant in place. He created a living mercy seat of worship in a tabernacle so God would be pleased to sit and remain in that humble sanctuary. David learned a vital secret somewhere in the process of bringing God's presence into Jerusalem. He learned that if you want to keep that blue flame there, somebody has to tend the fire. Do you mean we have to throw logs on the fire? No, you don't have to fuel that blue flame of God's Shekinah presence with earthly fuel. You fuel it through sacrificial worship. We have no right to call for the fire of God unless we are willing to be the fuel of God. Let me repeat that. We have no right to call for the fire of God unless we are willing to be the fuel of God. David was simply following the heavenly pattern Moses had received for the mercy seat. In Exodus chapter 25, uh, verses 18 through 20, And you shall make two cherubim of gold, of hammered work, you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. The wings of the cherubim that Moses built touched each other as they encircled and covered uh, the mercy seat where the presence of God would sit just above the lid or covering. If you read this passage closely, you will notice that the two golden cherubim weren't cast or poured into molds. God said that the gold used to form the covering, uh, to form the covering cherubim had to be beaten into the proper shape. And position. The way we can build a mercy seat is to take our positions as purified, beaten worshipers. One problem is that God still requires mercy seat worshipers to be formed of gold, tried in the fire, purified, conformed, beaten into the image of perfection, and moved into the proper position of unity for worship. This speaks of purity, brokenness, and unity the three components of true worship under the new covenant of the blood of Jesus. Brokenness on the earth creates openness in the heavens. It is interesting to me that when gold is refined over extreme heat, the first things come to the top and be skimmed off are the dross, the obvious impurities, and foreign matter. The last thing to be separated from gold is silver, a lesser precious metal that often blends with the raw gold ore. We often half have a hard time separating the good from the best. I'll repeat that one more time. The last thing to be separated from gold is silver, a lesser precious metal that often blends with the raw gold ore. We often have a hard time separating the good from the best. There you go. I hope you're encouraged, and uh, that was uh, that was one of my um, one of my favorites. Um, so uh, so we will uh, dig back in next time into the daily chase, pursue him, especially in uh, in in the times that we're living in. Pursue him daily, and chase after him nonstop. See you next time.